Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the design and optimization of the sustainable and resilient mass supply chain during the COVID-19. First, I'm going to talk about the motivation, what motivates us to do this type of research, the challenge and novelty research contribution, and the impact of this research. Actually, this research was inspired by my by my aunt company that is based in Toronto. Uh, they are the leading company in the advanced manufacturing of the textile technology. They produce the biometric uh, clothing. It enables people to do the remote monitoring of the brain, heart, muscle activity. What I have done with them, it was the optimization of the production rate and inventory level for the medical supply chain during, supply during the COVID-19. So uh, as you may remember by the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we had many law, for example, like the Toronto bylaw, uh, 541-2020, that wearing a mask and a face covering became mandatory in the indoor public places. It was started from July 2020. So in, in Toronto, there are, uh, or the greater Toronto area, there are 25 municipalities. The population is around 6 million and 500,000. It's based on the Canada statistics, uh, 2016. For sure, right now, the population has increased. But uh, for this research, we use the Canada statistic data based on the 2016. So, Based on these uh, law and regulations, millions of the people uh, are, uh, were affected uh, because of the uh, mask and face covering. It was, uh, the, and the purpose of this law, it was the reduction of the spread of the COVID-19. Well, however, on the other side, the Ontario government began investing in the medical manufacturer to redesign their operation and expand their capacity level. If you may remember by the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, so we were in the shortage of the mass supply chain. Uh, so the, the, the uh, uh, provincial government, they started to um, invest on the medical manufacturer to expand or some of them to switch the operation to produce the mask or the other PPE. On the other side, we had the unprecedented demand, the, the high demand, high increase in demand for the PPE supply. So how we could handle these demands and how we could match the uh, operation and the um, uh, 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 operation cap capacity or the production capacity. That was our motivation to uh, design the uh, resilient supply chain. On the other side, we wanted to design a sustainable supply chain as well. So we want to have it to con we wanted to uh, consider the sustainability criteria that uh, it includes three pillars of the economical, social, and environmental uh, factor. So first, let's see that what is the supply chain in a simple word, and then we look at the optimization model that we have developed. So the basic supply chain includes supplier, producer, and the customer or market team. It starts from supplier. Supplier provides the raw material, tools, equipment, utility required for a production, and then producer use those type of material in order to produce the uh, final item or finish uh, good for the market to fulfill the market demand. So here we had we have some challenges. First, what is the uh, market demand? Is the market demand certain or it's uncertain and it's fluctuating? For sure, during the COVID nineteen, we had the volatility in market demand, specifically for the medical problem. So that was one of our challenges. The other challenge, what should be the, the optimal uh, flow of the material between the facility within a supply chain? I mean, between the supplier and producer and producer to the market demand. Uh, so uh, in a simple word, we have uh, three categories that we want to consider for the supply chain network optimization. First, 
objective is to design a sustainable and resilient supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, the other criteria that we want to consider is the parameter that contribute in a supply chain. What type of parameter we have to consider in order to design the supply chain? One, it can be the demand parameter of the demand that is really important in supply chain. Uh, it has the impact on the number of the facility, on the capacity of the uh, facility that are involved in the supply chain and the other criteria. The other thing is the operational capacity of the facility uh, for the holding inventory and production later uh, I will talk about that it's very important specifically in uncertain situation the other uh, criteria that we have to consider is the fixed and variable cost because at the end of the day we don't want to have a supply chain uh, uh, that is not profitable so the profitability of the uh, supply chain is also important so we, as I said, we wanted to consider or we wanted to de design a sustainable supply chain. So we consider three objectives. The first one it is the expected profit. It can be the either expected profit or minimizing the total cost. The second objective is what the environmental impact. For this one, we consider the indicator of the CO2 emission. Uh, and the third objective that we consider is what the maximizing the customer service level. So later I will talk about that because it, 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 it can be a qualitative parameter. Later I will talk about that, that how we can um, convert this qualitative uh, factor to the quantitative parameter. Uh, so uh, we have two types of uncertainty, as I said operational risk and disruption risk. So what is the meaning of the operational risk? The operational risk is caused by the daily disturbance. It can be the volatility in demand, increase or decrease in demand, and uncertainty in the production capacity. In the specific uh, case uh, that is related to the COVID-19, if you may remember, uh, the producer uh, should practice the pre and the, the worker workforce should practice the uh, uh, physical distancing uh, during the COVID nineteen. So that has a, uh, has a significant impact on the uh, capacity of the production. So uh, let's assume that the company they had one hundred workforce from now on they have to uh, continue their uh, operation or the production with 50 workforce. So it has the impact on their production capacity. The other criteria that was uncertain for us, it was the sales isolation. So uh, let's assume that we, because we couldn't predict that uh, who can get the COVID-19. So based on the uh, regulation, so uh, anyone that with the symptom of the COVID-19, they should uh, uh, stay at home. So these are the uncertain parameters that we have to consider and uh, it's related to operational risk. But what about the disruption risk? Disruption risk stems from the high impact events such as earthquake, disease outbreak, wildfire, and flood. Uh, so for the disease uh, outbreak, we, we had the case of the COVID-19, but I want to uh, fresh your mind about the wildfire and flood that we experienced in BC last year. So last year, this time we had the wildfire or uh, in fall we had the uh, flood. And if you may remember, it has the impact on the supply of the fuel and the fuel uh, price uh, were increased at that time. Uh, so uh, that was the consequence of the disruption is what in a bigger scenario and bigger case is some facility may become unavailable. Again, if you may remember during the uh, flood that we had in uh, BC, uh, because of the uh, interruption and closure of the some of the highway, uh, we couldn't uh, send the uh, product from the Vancouver to the Alberta. And again, because of the flood, the, 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 the uh, pipeline uh, was shut down and impacted, and we, uh, we couldn't uh, transfer the uh, oil or the fuel from the Alberta to BC. So some of the facility equipment and infrastructure are uh, uh, may uh, uh, be in, 
affect it during the disruption risk. So it has the bigger impact on the supply chain. So for this type of uncertainty that I have mentioned, when we want to design a supply chain, we have to consider different scenarios uh, with different probability. And the type of the optimization model that we develop is based on the type of the risk that we are going to consider. Uh, so the, based on what I mentioned, we have two uh, consideration, strategic and operational in the, in the designing of the, or the configuration of the supply chain network. Uh, in the strategic level, we are going to consider the uh, economic, environmental and societal impact of the supply chain. And in the operational level, we are going to consider the uh, transportation planning, inventory planning and production planning that have the impact on the optimization of uh, 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 supply chain. So the, the, in order to show the challenges that we had, here uh, I have provided the uh, fuel price uh, over the past years in Canada. Uh, so you can see the uh, fluctuation in the November and uh, also uh, in May. So we have increase and decrease. So how we can consider these type of behavior in the optimization model? Sometimes some parameter may comply with the statistic with the certain statistical distribution. So we are going to adopt the concept of the uh, stochastic programming, but sometimes they are uncertain. We cannot uh, predict that it goes up or down. So we have to consider a state of the uncertainty. In some, in these cases, we are going to use the possibility realistic programming or the robot optimization. So on this slide, I have categorized the type of the um, uh, optim uh, optimization environment in three areas. If just we want to, we know that our operation, uh, the, the operational or disruption risk doesn't have that much impact on uh, our, our operation. So we can consider the certain optimization and then we develop the deterministic model or use the deterministic program. But in the risky situation, as I said, some parameter may be, uh, may be a random uh, parameter or comply with a certain statistical distribution. So we are going to uh, use or adopt the stochastic uh, programming. In uncertain situation, when we do not know the behavior of the parameter, we can use different type of method. In this case, I, I have used the possibilistic programming, but we, we can also use the robust optimization and we assume that the uh, certain parameter may deviate between the, um, uh, uh, between a certain range of uh, certain, uh, between a certain or a specific range. So uh, the, the uh, example, it can be the box on certain in the in the robust optimization. Uh, so first, let's review the literature and what uh, the others uh, work uh, when they wanted to design the supply chain. By the way, we have um, we may, uh, from now on when I'm talking, because in this case, I talk about the supply chain, but some uh, the uh, research, they consider the closed loop supply chain, the CLSC is the abbreviation of the closed loop supply chain. Some uh, research uh, consider the reverse logistic and RL in this uh, presentation is the abbreviation of the reverse logistic. So the, 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 the first study that I want to review is related to the CARA that they utilize the statistic model for a paper recycling network. And the result of the research uh, shows that they can reach to the more economical solution in comparison with deterministic model. The other research is what uh, uh, the research of the Ramazan et al. The 2013, they considered the multi-objective stochastic model to design the forward and reverse logistic network under uncertainty. So the objective that they have considered is what we related to the crop that is the economic objective, quality, and the uh, customer responsiveness. Uh, I myself, uh, I uh, developed a bi-objective scenario-based programming for a, a battery closed-loop supply chain network. In this case, I assume that 
because in the closed loop software chain, we want to consider the return of the product. I have considered different scenario for the recovery rate of the uh, product or the return end of life and end of use product. Uh, that was the case that I have adopted the uh, scenario based programming that is under the category of the stochastic program. The other uh, research uh, the, that uh, is related to the possibilistic model or the possibilistic programming is what the research of the Swabi and Salvini. They uh, developed the uh, possibilistic uh, model to consider the imprecise parameter. As you can see, I have mentioned imprecise parameter. I didn't mention the random parameter because for the random parameter, we are going to use the stochastic uh, model. So they, they consider that the, that the market demand, cost, time, and capacity parameter, uh, they uh, are imprecise. So they uh, use the possibilistic model. The other case is uh, the study is related to the study of the Pietro. They uh, developed the possibilistic mathematical programming, and they consider the uncertainty of the supply and demand. And the last one is, again, related to my uh, the previous research that that, uh, I developed a possibilistic model for the uh, battery closed loop supply chain. In that specific model, I consider that all the parameters are uncertain. So, based on what I have reviewed, we can see that most of the existing literature have considered one type of solution approach, like the possibilistic programming or stochastic programming. However, several sorts of uncertainty may exist, specifically uh, in the case of the uh, uncertain in the in the uncertain environment, such as the COVID-19 outbreak or the even high impact event that I have mentioned, like the wildfire and the uh, flood. Uh, the, the, uh, and again, I want to uh, recall that the supply chain may inclu include several facilities like the supplier, producer, distribution center, and retailer. So there are many parameters involved in the optimization model. So there are several uh, sources of uncertainty. So just uh, to show you that what type of factor may be uncertain for the, in the optimization model, later I will show you the optimization model, but uh, right now just let's assume that fixed and variable costs associated with the cost of agreement with facility, purchasing costs, transportation costs, operational costs. When we talk about the operational cost, it can include the production and inventory costs as well. And volatility in market demand, all of them are the parameter that can be uncertain in uncertain situations. So here is the table that uh, summary of the research uh, that I have reviewed. You can see the type of the network. Again, as I mentioned, the CLS, CN, it means the closed loop supply chain, SDN supply chain network, and RL reverse logistics. Uh, we also have the type of the objective that we have considered. Uh, EA means the, uh, the um, uh, economic aspect, GA means the green aspect, and SA is the social aspect. So you can see that what type of objective the other researchers have considered. For this specific model that I'm going to talk about it, I have considered three objectives like the economic aspect, environmental aspects, and the uh, social aspect. So the model that I have developed, it's uh, the robust, flexible, multi-objective uh, program. So it's the integration of the robust optimization flexible or, or the possibilistic optim uh, programming and multi-objective uh, program. So uh, as, as I mentioned, the Greater Toronto area include 25 regions and every region, they have different populations. Uh, so the population size and the density of the population are different in different regions that have the impact on the demand of the uh, market. So uh, to develop this type of uh, optimization model that I have mentioned, I want to consider the different source of uncertainty. Uh, I um, uh, suggested uh, three phases. In the phase one 
just we develop a flexible optimization model. Later, I am telling you that what I'm meaning by the flexible optimization model, and the, just I have considered the total cost. Uh, the, in the second phase, uh, I considered the environmental and social objective and then the, uh, uh, compute the trade of a solution or non dominant solution of the, uh, the optimization, the multi objective model. And in the third phase, uh, we had, uh, as I said, we had three objectives. Then we consider the sensitivity analysis on these three objectives and we uh, uh, investigated the impact of each objective on the other objective. So um, the first and second objective that is first one is what the total cost, uh, the second one is what the CO2 emission, they are the, they include the quantitative parameter. But the third objective it includes the capability index uh, of the producer. It includes the qualitative uh, parameter or the index. So how we can uh, consider this qualitative uh, factor or the qualitative index in the optimization model? Um, we, we apply the MCDM and the FASI QFD. I will talk about that and I will show you that how I have converted this qualitative um, factor to the quantitative from so this is the optimization this is the supply chain network that we have designed for the uh, medical supply for the mask supply chain in the Toronto. Uh, as I said, this research was uh, inspired by a medical uh, producer, medical supply producer. We had one producer. Then we had the distribution center. Uh, so the, uh, let's assume that the producer produced the product, sent it to the distribution center, and distribution center distributed between. Um, uh, different retailer and the, 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 the uh, customer or the, the uh, people can reach to the retailer and purchase their product. So we have three types of questions in this uh, case, uh, the problem statement of the supply chain network. The first one is which and how many producer distribution center retailers should be considered in a network. So we don't know that how many distribution centers we require because it, it, as a company, it's very important that they know that how many partners they require in, in a supply chain, right? And this type of decision is a strategic decision and uh, it's difficult to change those decisions. So we have, uh, the first question that we want to answer is based on the market demand and the demand for our product. We uh, want to know that how many partners we require to make the optimal supply chain. The second question is that how many products we have to produce in each period. So we consider multi-period uh, supply chain network. Uh, the, the period, it can be based on the week uh, or month or the um, year. Uh, but in this research, we consider the um, uh, monthly. So the pe period, it was the month. Uh, and how many products we have to uh, produce and how many we have to hold as an inventory uh, this is the question that is very important. The answer of this question is very important for the producer. So uh, this is the, the first objective function that we have developed. The first term is related to the production cost. The second is related to the inventory cost. The third, fourth, and fifth term are related to the transportation cost between facility. And the last three, uh, terms are related to the uh, fixed cost of agreement. In some cases, be because in this case, we already have the facility, we consider the uh, fixed cost as a fixed cost of agreement with the third party. But sometimes if you uh, review the, the other research, you can see that this fixed cost, uh, they uh, define it as a fixed cost of opening new facilities. So they consider the uh, uh, cost of opening new facility or building a new facility. 
So uh, we, we also have uh, some constraint for this optimization model. The first one is related to the balance constraint of the uh, producer that balance between the supply inventory within a uh, producer. Uh, the second uh, and the, uh, the, the third and fourth constraint are related to balance constraint between the facility for the distribution center and retailer. Uh, constraint number five is related to the demand constraint. We want to uh, produce the uh, number of the product uh, that can um, fulfill the market demand. Uh, and the other constraint, as you can see, constraint six, seven, eight, and nine are related to the capacity of the producer, distribution center, and retailer. Uh, and the last two constraints are related to uh, binary variable and decision variable. Binary variable, it means that those uh, variables that uh, can get the value of zero or one. But decision variable, uh, they can get any positive value. So here, as you can see on constraint number seven, uh, we have uncertainty uh, less than or equal. We, we mentioned that the uh, inventory level uh, N, it, it should be less than or equal uh, to the capacity of the producer or the capacity or, or warehouse capacity of the producer. Uh, so we consider uh, this sign that is the soft version of the um, uh, less than or equal because we wanted to provide the uh, flexibility for a producer. And then uh, I will uh, let you know later that what it was the logic behind this uh, sign. So uh, this uh, based on the Pietro uh, et al. based on this re research. This constraint, it can be converted to the crease version because we cannot solve this constraint uh, directly. Uh, uh, and we have first, we have to convert this constraint to the uh, crease version. So what is the meaning of the, the first term is related to the capacity of the um, uh, producer for holding the inventory, but what would be the second term that we add? So, Beta here is the uh, satisfaction level of the content. It can be, it can deviate between zero and one, but the rule here is implied the violation of the flexible constraint. In practice rule, it can be the emergency stock or the product purchased from the other resource. So the, if you consider the case that uh, we want to fulfill the market demand, but we do not have uh, enough uh, uh, um, uh, product in our warehouse, we can purchase the product or extra product uh, from the other uh, producer or partner, or we can have the emergency stock. So for those, uh, for both case, we impose additional cost to our system, right? So we are going to consider the penalty cost uh, for holding the emergency cost or purchasing the uh, product from the uh, other partners or other company that produce the product, uh, that, that produce the same product. And uh, the first term is related to the, as you can see, it's a minimization of the Z1 or the total cost. And the second term is related to the uh, penalty cost to the new term that we have added. Here, as you can see, we uh, add a new term that is the violation of the constraint. So we consider this one, we consider this one again in the objective function and we associated the penalty cost for that one because we are not interested to, have, to purchase a, a product from the other company or we are not interested to keep the emergency stock. There are many reasons, let's assume that in, in this a specific case, it was the uh, mass supply chain. But let's assume that you are producing some product that has the expiry date. So we don't want to have a, a high number of the uh, products in our warehouse. The other thing, if we want to um, keep a high uh, level of the inventory in our warehouse, we have to hire more workforce 
uh, and uh, we should rent more where uh, we should have more space so we have to rent the warehouse these are the costs that associated with the extra inventory or holding the extra inventory so in real case when we know the demand of the market since we are not interested to keep the higher level of the inventory we are going to associate the penalty cost to the extra inventory and the constraint is similar to those constraints and we have the new constraint here that was the constraint number seven so we solved the optimization model uh, by the uh, simply. So the number of the constraint here, the, it was 645 constraint. It was the real case scenario. It was not a, lo a large scale optimization model. As I mentioned, it was 25 area in a Toronto. We, uh, we know those area, we uh, knew the, the uh, retailers and uh, uh, so uh, the third and number of the constraint it was 645 5000 it was the number of the decision variable 57 it was the binary variable and 20,000 uh, coefficient it was in this optimization model based on what uh, we had from the optimization model and the result show the total cost, the minimum total cost for the um, uh, company, for the producer, uh, the location of the producer uh, is in the Etobicoke, uh, and the, the, we had three uh, distribution center in Mississauga, Brampton, and Conco, and we had uh, several uh, retailers. So we spent the uh, mass that we produce to this specific retail. And here you can see the um, value of the flow or the optimal flow between the uh, facility. Let, let's see that for the specific case for the distribution center uh, number two, you can see the number of mass sent to the distribution center is matched by the number of mass shipped from the distribution center number two. Uh, so the, we check the, uh, usually we check the optimization model that we develop. We have to make sure about the accuracy of the optimization model. We did the same uh, some sensitivity analysis. Just I have provided this type of uh, information uh, for um, those that who doesn't have background in the uh, uh, optimization model or solving this type of uh, scenario. That how it works. So here is a real location of the facility. Uh, as you can see, I, as I mentioned, we had one producer that I have shown with the black circle, and we had uh, some distribution center, retailers, and the uh, market. So we had the more, by the way, we had um, for every region, as I mentioned, we had 25 region. For every region, we consider uh, uh, one market. Right. So because we wanted to know that what would be the demand from the market based on the population of each region. And uh, the other thing, you can see the connection between the facility. For example, uh, the, the, the look, uh, let's uh, consider the uh, distribution center, uh, the distribution center, center uh, number two has the connection with the uh, retailer uh, number two and the retailer number 10. So we uh, determine that what distribution center should be uh, selected and what would be the connection between the uh, distribution center, a specific distribution center with the um, uh, selected retailer. So as I mentioned, we consider the flexibility in the uh, uh, optimization model specific for the inventory level. Right now, I want to show you the reason that why we consider the flexibility constraint here. Let's assume that we want to produce 6 million masks mass they be between the population and between the demand that we estimated for uh, each period right so the level of the production it will be consistent 
But as you can see, we consider several scenario, five scenarios, you can see the decrease in uh, the production capacity. E uh, means the production capacity uh, or the capacity of the producer to produce uh, mass. So as you can see, uh, is the supply or the capacity of the supply uh, decreases the inventory level for the previous period, it should be increasing. Because in the specific period, we want to have the specific level of the production. Our demand is fixed, let's assume that is 6 million, right? But the production level may decrease it. So if the production level decreases, for that amount, we have to increase the number of the inventory or the emergency uh, stock that I have talked about it in the previous term. So we want to fulfill all the market demand. So this help us to, uh, to uh, have the OS flexible optimization model in the case that if our capacity decreases, as I said, based on the, for this specific scenario, it was related to the uh, capacity of the production number of the workforce or the uh, self uh, the, that was related to self isolation or the practicing the physical distance. If the capacity of the producer decreases, in the previous term uh, period, the number of the inventory that we want to hold in the warehouse, it should be increased, right? So the, this strategy help us to produce a certain level of the mass in every period. The other uh, thing uh, that we have considered, as I said, in, in addition to the resilient supply chain, but by the way, uh, I don't want to go in detail into the optimization model, just you, uh, I uh, indicated the, the flexible uh, constraint. We also consider the robust optimization in, in this uh, research. Uh, this research is published, uh, uh, is recently published, accepted and uh, published. So uh, we consider the robust optimizations as well. But um, I, uh, for this presentation, I'm not going through the robust optimization. I want to talk about the multi-objective. We also consider the second and third objective in addition to first objective that was related to the economic objective. The second one is what related to the CO2 emission. Uh, K is the CO2 emission, uh, X number of the product, N is the uh, capacity of the truck. So it, this uh, objective function shows the uh, total uh, amount of the CO2 emitted uh, in the supply chain. The third objective, yeah, so we want to mean for sure we want to minimize that objective that is the CO2 emission, like the first one that was the total cost. Mm -hmm. uh, for the third objective, as I said, we have the qualitative uh, factor that is the capability index of the potential uh, producer. So we want to increase or to maximize the uh, capability index. But how we can measure this capability index is the qualitative factor, how we want to uh, compare the capability index of the uh, producer. Let's assume that you have uh, five producer and you want to judge by, between the uh, capability, capability of these uh, producers. So how you can uh, find the um, uh, the index or how you can uh, convert the, uh, this qualitative parameter to the quantitative uh, qualitative factor to the quantitative parameter. So we apply the concept of the fuzzy QFD model. I usually teach this type of uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, multi-criteria decision making in the uh, in my class that is supply chain tactics and strategy. We are going to consider different uh, criteria. First uh, category of the criteria is the customer's expectation. So for the customer's expectation, we consider price, durability, reliability, and environmental compliance. And for the technical determinant, we consider the experience, strategic alliance, and flexible manufacturing systems of the uh, uh, company. So 
In this scenario, we want to know that how the technical uh, specification or determinant of the producer can uh, fulfill the customer's expectation. So as I said, we uh, apply the fuzzy linguistic scale here. You can see the fuzzy li linguistic scale. The, you can see the meaning of this number. I'm not going through that. Just I want to show you that how we um, convert this qualitative uh, parameter to the quantitative. So first, um, we judge between the um, the, we consider the impact of the technical determinant uh, on customer's uh, expectation. So uh, we consider three decision makers. Uh, so every decision maker judged the, about the importance of a specific deter technical determinant on the uh, fulfillment of the uh, customer's expectation. Then at the end, there are several metrics here uh, to compare the um, the, uh, to compare between the uh, criteria. But at the end, there's the last metric that is the result of the QFD model is related to the ranking of the producer. Here you can see the ratio or the ranking. Uh, so right now we have the quantitative parameter that we can uh, uh, adopt this parameter into our optimization model that is the ranking of the producer. So we solve the uh, multi-objective uh, model uh, based on the distance method. We consider the different weight uh, for each um, uh, objective function. Just I want to show you that how we interpret this uh, figure. These are the trade of solution. We cannot say that which one is better. So the, uh, because of that, we call it the non-dominated solution. It depends on the decision maker and the, the strategy of uh, the policy maker that uh, they want to choose or select what, uh, uh, so what solution, set of solution. So, but, but let's uh, interpret the result of the trade of solution between carbon emission and total cost, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see here, as we want or we try to decrease the carbon emission, the total cost increases. So it means that we have to apply some strategy uh, to uh, invest on the, some uh, uh, technology. We, we have different type of ideas. These days we have uh, different policies one, it can be the carbon tax policy. The other one, it can be the adoption of the green technology in production. For all of them, there is a cost associated with the carbon emission. So as we want to decrease the carbon emission, the total cost of all operation increases. So um, the other thing that is related to the total cost and capability index, it means that as we want to increase the capability index or the capability of the producer, the total cost again increases. It means that we have to invest in our technology. We have to invest in all the strategy that we are going to adopt in order to increase the capability index uh, that has the impact on the, satisfy, uh, on the customer satisfaction. Uh, so the, on this slide, I have provided the managerial insight of this uh, research. Uh, uh, I, uh, as, we, as you may remember in the previous slide, I, I, I uh, told you that uh, um, the, the concept of the multi-objective model is like this, that if we want to uh, increase or improve value of one objective, the value of other objective, it can be degraded or it can be uh, compromised. So if we, let's consider the second set of the table or the second scenario. Here you can see that the highest weight or highest priority is associated with first objective that is the total cost or the economic uh, consideration in our optimization model. So you can see the number of the facility. You have one producer, uh, two uh, distribution center, and uh, five selected retailers. 
but as you uh, um, increase the weight of other objectives like the social and the environmental objective, the configuration of the network, it will be different. So what will happen? The capability of the producer increase, the social aspects improve, but the total cost and CO2 emission of the whole supply chain network are degraded. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the distance between the facility increases. As the distance between, facility, between the facility increases, it has the impact on the transportation cost. It has the impact on the CO2 emission. So that is the insight because when we solve the, uh, as I said here, uh, when we solve the uh, uh, multi-objective uh, optimization model, we find the different set of scenario uh, and the different set of the uh, non-dominated solution. We cannot say that which one is the best. It depends on the decision of the uh, practitioner and decision maker. So uh, here uh, in this uh, research, uh, we have in investigated several challenges that mostly it was related to the uncertain parameter during the COVID-19 when we want to design the, uh, the mass supply chain network. And we also developed the flexible and robust uh, 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 optimization model uh, to uh, develop the uh, resilient supply chain uh, to to have the, to design a resilient supply chain network uh, that can handle the uh, impact of the uncertainty uh, for the future crisis. It can be the disease outbreak or the other uh, type of uncertainty or the natural disaster. So we solved the uh, the uh, multi-objective uh, uh, optimization on model, and we found out that. If uh, and we demonstrated that if one objective function improves, the value of the other objective function may decrease. Thanks for uh, listening to my presentation. Uh, if you have any question, I will be uh, happy to answer your questions.